The habit of mind of questioning and posing problems. This is often one of those habits that in the moment gets misinterpreted because it's not about answering questions. It's about asking the questions. People who are very, very good at this habit are people like interviewers. The sort of person who can interview someone and know which questions to ask and the right way to ask them to stimulate a response. This response doesn't matter so much. It's drawing that response out of them. Scientists are another great example of someone who's good at questioning and posing problems. They know which questions to ask, the how to formulate the hypotheses to get the information that they're looking for. So questioning and posing problems can be a highly skillful process. And we've got lots of tools at our disposal as teachers. We've talked about these for many years. We've got Bloom's taxonomy of questions. We've got Anderson's hierarchy. We've got nothing to do with me. We've got a whole lot of things about questioning and questioning techniques, open and closed questions, leading questions, these sorts of things. But I've also heard Art Costa talk about what he calls powerful questions. And he talks about five elements of a question that help invite students into more thoughtful responses. And these powerful questions, and I'll talk about these in more detail in another part of the course, have these five qualities. Powerful questions are plural. They don't ask for the answer. They ask for one of the answers. They are tentative. They don't ask for an exact answer, the definitive answer. They ask for a possible answer, what might be, what could be. And I, can I just add that for me, adding a tentative statement to my questioning made a huge difference to my classroom. When I shifted from asking students, what's the answer to that question? What do you think the answer is? To saying, what might be the answer to this question? What could be the answer? You know, those sort of words. The level of response, the number of students who were prepared to put their hand up to answer was extraordinary. Plural, tentative. They have an invitational stem. And an invitational stem means that rather than just saying, what's the answer to this question? You say, what do you think the answer to this question might be? Just by putting that question, that you statement. Now, I directed that question to everybody in the room individually, rather than just saying, what's the answer to this question? Which can be ignored. The invitational stem invites each person to uh, engage in the question. The powerful questions also have what we call a uh, positive presupposition. A positive presupposition assumes that the questioner has the capacity and the strategies to answer the question. So rather than asking have you got any strategies you could use to answer this question? You ask the question, what are some of the strategies that you do have that you might be able to use to answer this question? And the presupposition in there is that you do have the strategies that you will be able to use to answer the question. Where the first question, do you have any strategies, could be answered no. And the last part is about naming the cognition. When we ask a question, one of the rules I want you to carry with you is not to use the word think, because students don't know how to do it. Don't ask students to think about a question. It's what I call a collective verb, right? It's one of those terms that can mean a lot of things. You can have a collective noun, why can't you have a collective verb? But when we ask students to answer a question, we ask them to analyze it, we ask them to compare, we ask them to describe, we ask them to judge, we ask them to, we build in the name of the cognition we want them to engage in. Now when questions have those five elements, plural, tentative, invitational stem, positive presupposition and naming the cognition, they invite rich, deep and thoughtful responses. Now Learning how to develop those is something we can talk about in another part of the course. I just wanted to give you a flavour that questioning, one of those things we do every day, particularly as teachers, 
is a rich and skillful process. Knowing when, knowing how, knowing why we are asking different questions is a skill that we develop time and time again. And uh, I'd invite you to reflect deeply on how you go about asking questions because as teachers, it's one of our primary habits of mind.